My name's Anthony and welcome to Wash Wednesday. Today we have Jason here. Jason, what kind of car we got, man? We have a 2006 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9 in electric blue. So I know the car looks good, however it is a little dusty. So today we're going to be performing a rinseless wash on this Evo. Jason, do you know what a rinseless wash is? I've heard about them, but I've never done it or seen them done. So. All right, so it's a pretty cool method. It's kind of all in the name, rinseless wash, meaning it's the same wash method you'd normally go about doing, but it's no rinse at the end. So we're gonna be using Optimum's no rinse, um, along with a two bucket wash method, a big red sponge, a chenille wash mitt, and an assortment of microfiber drying towels. So are you ready to do this, man? Let's do it. All right, let's jump to it. All right, so we got our buckets here. We have our media bucket with O&R, and then we have our rinse bucket. Both have grit guards in them, and we're gonna do a pre-spray with an O&R dilution mixed at 256 to one on the car before we actually start washing. That way it kind of lubricates the surface. So Jason, you get the big sprayer, man. I'll take the little guy. That doesn't mean anything, by the way. I don't want that, I don't want that kind of cross to something weird, but so, all right, so it's pretty simple. We got our spray, we got our spray bottles, and we're just gonna start spraying it down, man, just all like right. you normally start spraying it. Basically, as long as the surface is covered with some type of lubricity, we're good to go. So, Jason, I, I got questions for you, man. Yep. So, while we're washing, while we're spraying it down, I gotta know, what are you currently doing to wash the car? Because it looks good. It looks really good right now, and I just, I wanna know. Currently, I'm just using regular soap and, you know, car, car soap and a sponge from a microfiber sponge. Mike, yeah. okay, good. I was gonna say, I was waiting for you to say yeah. microfiber. Okay, I, I heard it once. And then I dry with just your regular Costco yellow microfiber towels. Okay, okay, um, all right, all right. I tried to do the best to my knowledge hey. of what to do, but. Dude, I as long as I hear the word microfiber, I'm pretty happy for the most part, for the most part. But, uh, all right, so. I guess moving on to the car, man, because everybody's curious about the car, right? You guys want to know about the Evo. So, how long have you had it? Had it for about a year and a half keep, now. Hey, keep spraying, man. Don't so. slack <laughs> off, dude. We're, we're trying to wash a car here. I this isn't, <laughs> what do you think this is? <laughs> so, I've had it for about a year and a half. Um, wasn't in the best condition. It was obviously kept clean overall, but I've done some tasteful things to it. I've. Where'd you get it from? I actually bought it in Seattle, Washington. So okay. I drove out from Boise to L get it. Little road trip, right? Little road trip. Took a trailer out there and and picked it up. Um, so it was on stock wheels at the time. Nothing really done to it. It was tuned on speed density, but nothing crazy. Um, okay. I just got some cams on it, springs, retainers, um, Supertech valves. Fun stuff. You're, yeah. you're saying all all sorts of fun things right now. All these are these are things that I want to hear, and these are things that these guys want to hear. Okay. All sorts of fun stuff. It, it has a stage three comp clutch. It's tuned on speed density. Has ETS full intercooler piping. It has an AMS front mount intercooler. It has ID injectors tuned on 91 and E85. Um, 27 pounds of boost on E85 and 24 pounds of boost on 91. Are you guys writing this list down? Because this is a pretty big list. We're gonna we're gonna try to include all of this in the description, but this is gonna be pretty hard, man, because he keeps going. Is it stopping anytime soon? And last last okay. thing really is the I got the I just put the wheels on not, not too long ago. They're NKRPF one 17 by nine and a half, and came with a beautiful um, Tomei titanium catback exhaust. So that was a pickup. Nope, so, I appreciate it. all right, I, I'm literally out. My, my baby bottle is out. So how much more do you I got? I got about 
three quarters. <laughs> All right, let's call it good. It looks well covered to me. It looks well lubricated. So let's go ahead and jump to the wash process. Okay, so we got the car completely sprayed down and we wanna take advantage of getting this done before this wind starts drying things. So we got our two buckets here. So a two bucket wash method, Jason. Are you with me on that? Have you ever heard of a two bucket wash method? I've heard of it and I try to do it as correctly as I can. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay, okay. Right on, so it's not it's not super complicated. Basically, uh, my rule that I go by is I go panel by pa panel, by panel. Um, so it means a hood, for example, you're gonna wash the hood, you're gonna dip that wash media, your mitt, right, back into our rinse bucket, rub it up against the grit guard that we have in the bucket, and then back into our solution mix, and then back onto a new panel. And it's just gonna be rinse and repeat. Literally, rinse and repeat until the whole car is done. So I'm gonna have you start on the big red sponge because I feel like that's a really cool product to use, especially for your first time uh, using O&R. Um, and I'm gonna be using the chenille mitt. So I'm gonna have you start at the front of the car. Okay. I'm gonna start at the back of the car. So just remember, panel by panel, after you're done with one panel, back into the rinse bucket, back into the wash bucket, back onto the car. Sounds good. All right, so big red sponge, that's yours. Just make sure, oh, and one, one thing too. So when you grab the sponge, you don't want it soaking wet. You want to drip it, or I guess squeeze it, till you just have just enough solution in there and you'll kind of see it where it's on the verge of dripping. Okay. So go ahead and load up the sponge yourself and I'm gonna get started on the rear quarter panels. Contest, man. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta get it done. <laughs> Don't take your time. This isn't a beauty pageant. What you'll find is that really a couple passes are gonna do the job. The O and R man does a super good job at cleaning, so you don't have to sit there and keep scrubbing away. Okay. So back to the top here. I'm actually gonna hit that roof. Work methodically from top to bottom, which you should be doing, but. I guess that's my that's my task. I'll work from top to bottom. I'll have him work on the uh, on the other areas. So, what made you want to get an Evo? Why not a Subaru? Because I because basically, Jason, the reason why I ask is it's super Subaru territory here in Idaho, and you know that. Oh yeah. So, my love for Mitsubishi is actually funny and corny. Started with Paul Walker, Fast and Furious <laughs> One, the green yep, Eclipse, yep. like most people. Probably the that buster. got into the Evos and Eclipses. The so long live the Buster. So that's what got me into Mitsubishi's actually. So as soon as I could afford my first Evo, that's what I went out and did in about 2008. I bought my first Evo 9. Did a lot of stuff to it, sold it, completely regretted it. What color, and what color was it? That was a Rally Red. Oh, and was it a, a GSR? It was a GSR as okay, well, okay. same as this one. Um, Regretted selling that one. Then went to a Evo 10, which I liked for different reasons, but I missed the raw rugged nine. So here I am with my third Evo and it's back to an Evo nine. So well, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how I... The nine is kind of, I mean, a lot of people kind of refer to the nine as like the cream of the crop, right? Oh, yeah. Because the nine's got the 4G63, right? It, it's, it's, it's a boost fiend, it loves yeah. boost, so. I mean, cause, and so you had a 10 then. I had a 10, yeah. And then in comparison, what were your thoughts on the 10 versus the nine? Like what, like what, like what were the major differences for you? So as far as the 10 drivability, everyday car, it was a lot better, quieter. Um, interiors were still kind of cheap as all Evos are and everyone knows, but you know, this is more of the race car the, the race car. Field. Let's throw parts on it and get a lot of power, very cheap. Yeah, and yeah. So that's just, that was my, that's my main goal for my Evo is a, a fast street car and it's not my daily driver. Okay. So what do, what I do you get, have, what do you have your daily driver? I have a GMC Sierra 1500. So that's a cool truck, right? Yep. It, it, so. that, that, that's something cool. Yeah. So you're, you're not sitting there <laughs> driving, driving something too bad, man. No, no, not at all. So I like to just, work on this tinker on it in the garage and take it out on the weekends for cruises car meets and so 
just enjoy the car. Yourself, uh, you consider yourself a wrench then? Are you pretty good at, at kind of tinkering uh, at things? Or you kind of <laughs> leave it to the pros? Be I, honest, be honest. I leave, I leave the motor internals to the pros. Okay. I did lifters myself, which is about as far as I will go. Um, but as far as bolt-ons, I've done all the bolt-ons. Um, and, but yeah, as far as motor stuff, that's, that's not my cup of tea. <laughs> so, leave that one to the pros, leave the tuning to the pros. Tuning, so, I know tuning. Okay, so, we live in Idaho, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, but it's not, it's not, <laughs> I wouldn't say we're living in the stone ages by any means, but I mean, as far as access to a lot of like tuners and a lot of other, I guess, really reputable car people, we don't really have a whole lot here. So my question is, where did you go to tune it? Where would you go about finding a tuner? So being from Southern California and growing up in the Evo scene out there when they were in the prime, it was 06, 07, 08, when everyone was buying them, they were new, they were nice. I learned about a lot of the shops that are still around today, so that's kind of an easy tell is the shops that have made it over the years um, stick out to me. You know, you hear reviews, everyone's got a bad review, but it, you know, it's cars, things are going to happen. Yeah. So I Definitely. took this car to KT Motoring in Chatsworth. Um, I actually trailered it down from Idaho just to go to them because of I felt comfortable and I, yeah. I those guys had built a good name for themselves. Yeah. So. Took it down to KT Motoring about two months ago and got tuned on E85 and 91. Right so, on. As far as finding a shop, um, the forums are the best. If you if yeah. you don't have any in your area, you know, um, the car before me, before I had it, was tuned by English Racing and English Racing very in Washington. Reputable, yeah, very, very reputable, reputable shop. Very reputable. Yeah. Um, just being from California, I wanted to take the car home, get visit family, seems. visit friends, and and get the car worked on. So that's you know, KT Motoring was my. My choice right on so. i mean because i mean like i know how hard it's gonna you know it is for you know find people that are reputable and oh yeah but once you have a person you have a person right that's exactly. kind of that's how it works exactly. so anyways so what are you thinking of that big red sponge i, I gotta i gotta know what are your thoughts because a lot of people are they're, they're confused <laughs> when they first use it they don't know it is different i mean it looks different you can see it's it's kind of cut in these cube shapes but solid in the middle but then on each side it's but you can tell it's it's grabbing the dirt. Um, you can see it kind of inside. Um, it's trapping the dirt in there. It's super soft. I, you it is, know, it's, it it's awesome. You know, a, lot of, a lot of people they see they hear they hear about a sponge and they're like, isn't sponge? Isn't that something that's in the past? Isn't everything microfiber? And I say yes to a certain degree, but we're using O and R, which is made specifically to use with that sponge. Okay. I mean, it doesn't have to be used with the sponge, but that sponge works well with O and R. And I've only ever used mitts, um, uh -huh. so this is yeah the first time I've used anything different, and I, I like it. You like it? <laughs> I like, you like it. it. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're just finishing up on the mirror here, Jason. You got that mirror over there? All good over here. All right, dude. So we got the mirror. We got the whole car. Um, it's still saturated with O and R, so we still got that lubricity. So while it's still wet, we're gonna use a drying aid. Um, to not only help with the drying process, but also add some protection to the car. So we're gonna be using Optimum's Car Wax, which means we're gonna do one spray per panel along with our microfiber drying towel and make sure that the car is dried and protected and good to go. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, so I think I put the towels in the back of your car. Yep. I'll grab the car wax. All right, so. You want, I, I'll take the baby blue, it's fine. I'll take the, I, I, I'll admit, the baby blue, I mean, I'm okay with it, man. So what I like to do is I like to keep it folded. Okay. So that way we can flip it over and then open it up, flip to the other side, and we have several different areas for a clean surface. Awesome. So what I'll do is just to kind of get your towel ready to go, um, I'll do a little spray of this car wax on here. I'll do a spray on mine, and then we're gonna go from panel to panel. So okay. go ahead and let's see, we'll get you set up. Okay, fender's good to go, and I'm gonna start on this door here. Okay. One spray, and just start wiping it in, dude. What do you think, smooth? Man. Yeah, these towels are, <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, it's crazy how smooth it feels. <laughs> like wow. using a drying aid, man, that's changed the way that I've, oh, I've dried man. cars. It's, it's insane, and yeah. the fact of how smooth it is, and especially with the waffle weave, you know, with the low pile, it just, it really has that absorption and has that really slick feel. So 
All right, next thing, dude, we'll do a couple sprays on this hood here. Get you, uh, we'll do one more. There you go. Knock out the hood, and uh, we'll get started on this other door. So, what do you currently use to wax the car? You can tell us. We're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> we're not afraid to know. I use. So I've only waxed it maybe two times since I've had it because okay. it kind of sits in the garage a lot. But yeah. I have used the yeah <laughs> garage queen, but it, it, it makes its way out. Yeah. Um, I do use chemical guys. They're butter wax. Okay. Um, is yeah. what, I, what yeah. I have been using. I banana. It smells like bananas, yes. right? I got it for a gift for Christmas for my brother, and so that's kind of what I started with. Um, I'm not a crazy detailer. I don't really know much, you know, about different products. So I just yeah. went with them over, you know, it being popular. So no, that's, that's honest, man. We're, and that's kind of the reason why we created the show is to kind of teach people, teach the owners and kind of make it for the viewers, make it fun, make it informative. That way they can see cool cars, learn about cool cars, um, and then learn proper washing techniques. So, uh, what do you think this wax smells like, dude? I think it smells like pina colada. It does. It does. It okay. actually does. <laughs> it's exactly what it smells like. I'll knock out this roof here. Okay. Here's the spray. That's all you if you want to get the front bumper. Okay. A little goes a long way, man. I mean, it works super well. No streaks or anything like that. Yeah, no, it's... I'm a, I'm a streak fiend, man. Oh, yeah. It just bothers me. I think that's a pet peeve of everybody. All right, man, so future plans for the car. We gotta know, what are your future <laughs> plans? I know you said you wanna build it into a fast, fast race car, but are you planning on auto crossing it? Are you planning on dragging it? What's a... What are your plans in the race world? Uh, I have big? mixed feelings. I would love, I would love a car that does it all, to be honest. Yeah. So, as far as the next steps, not too sure. It's a stock, stock block for now. Um, but future, future, I would say a 2.4 liter bottom end. Maybe the next step would be um, a forward-facing turbo kit. Ooh, ooh, that's fancy, always that's yes. always been a dream of mine for, now, for, yeah. for an Evo is a forward facing they turbo. Look, they look mean. Yeah. So I know I, I enjoy it all. I love I love the canyons and curvy roads, but I, I also panel for you right there. Awesome. Go. I also love, you know, starting from a stop and ripping down the quarter mile. So, yeah, I mean, it's all it's all an adrenaline rush. So. So I'm guessing you launch this thing then. I haven't yet. You haven't yet. I have oh, okay, not yet. Okay, you haven't yet. Okay, but you're going not to. This, not this one. Yeah, I've launched the other ones, but this one I have yet to, yet to launch. So, well, I'm sure it'll be fun when you do, man. Because the zero to sixty times on the oh, Evos, man. man, are pretty ridiculous as is for a straight out of the box car. I mean, I know with now uh, with all the technology and the latest cars, like the the Focus RS, which would be a cool car to get on oh, yeah. here. Um, Lots of new technology, man. Lots of new cool things Definitely. available to people. Yep. All right. Side skirt's done for me. That's done for you. What do we have left? Front of the car is done. We have the rear. You want to do window? Are we doing windows now, or do we wait? Dude. Okay. So one crazy thing about this car wax is you can use it on everything. So normally you wouldn't use car wax on trim, right? That's a big no-no because it leaves white marks, and you're sitting there scrubbing with IPA alcohol or using something to try to remove that. Dude, watch this. There you go, I just did the biggest no-no of any car wax ever. But hit your trim, hit your windows, and you're good to go. Awesome. Did yeah, man, that is did crazy. It, did it turn it white? Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it doesn't even smear. Doesn't just like smear. any other detailer would. I mean, you get it on your windows, and you gotta get a dry, clean towel to wipe off all the residue. We're using the same towel, by the way. We're still using the same drying towel. We haven't swapped and out towels. Very, yeah, very absorbent. That's, I'm usually pulling out, you know, three or four of my Costco microfibers. No, oh, yeah, it's... You're making our towels sound really good. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. No, no, I, I've never <laughs> used this, the waffles or, it's, it, it feels awesome. And it's holding water. I mean, it's holding the moisture. It's not streaking as I, as I keep rubbing the car, so. The 
one rule is don't let it touch the ground. It's a dead it's towel low. at that point, right? You, right you know that? Trash. All right. Right. In the, I, don't even, I don't even wash it. You're right okay. in the trash. All right, good. <laughs> That's education that some people don't have, man. No. They usually, they'll pick it up and start using it again after that. Oh, no. All right. Spray right there, spray right there. Dude, this exhaust, you're right. This thing's meaty, man. That looks awesome with that burnt tip. And it came with the car, right? It came with the car, yeah. So the guy right before me, he must have done the full exhaust. He did a map performance um, O2 delete, their downpipe. It's a, it's a one piece for the O2 and the downpipe. So it's not an open dump, unfortunately. Something. It's a recirculating one, so um, he did that. He did a, I believe it's a STM test pipe he got on it, which all test pipes do the same thing. So yeah, piece, um, of, piece of metal. You really, yeah, you can really get any any test pipe as long as it's not super cheap in the. In oh, the sorry, I was like, well, I'm like, let me get you, man. <laughs> you need some wax. <laughs> as long as the welds aren't gonna break. I mean, it's the test pipe's a test pipe. So he actually, yeah, he he put a full exhaust on it and. Honestly, when I bought the car, I didn't even have watermarks on it yet. So I got extremely lucky with yeah. a, a nice full exhaust um, turbo back for no hard water on it or anything yeah. like that. Still nope. looks really clean. Just very, very clean. Pretty, pretty new, you can tell. So, right on, man. Board on that one. All right, so I'm done with the paint. Are you done? I think so. Okay, so with the wheels still wet with O&R, we're gonna be topping them off with some power clean and using our wheel brushes here. So these are our new wheel brushes and our brush lineup. They are flag tip nylon. They're super green. They're the greenest brush of all brushes, right? Is that green or that what? It's pretty green. It's, it's super green. So um, we're gonna go ahead and spray the wheels down with some power clean, diluted at three to one, three parts water, one part power clean. I'm gonna have you start off on the front wheel and I'm gonna knock out the rear wheel. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, we'll get you set up here. Couple sprays of power clean. Let's try to keep it on the wheel and not on the paint. All right, so there you go. Go ahead and do a dip in the water and then get going. Wheels weren't super dirty to begin with, but you can't have a clean car without clean wheels. So these wheels are supposed to be pretty light then, right? They are pretty lighting. They're they're the, they're the lightest, right? <laughs> RPF1s are known for being the lightest They are wheel. pretty light and that's, you know, I went for, I know 17s aren't the most appealing to the eye, but I kind of went for a functional with a little bit of a look. So the 17s um, by nine and a half is obviously lighter than an 18 by nine and a half. Um, I think they come in at 16 or 17 pounds a wheel. Okay, yeah. Um, plus tire, light. obviously, but no, I, I mean, and they're they're super they're super cheap. Yeah, they're they're, they're meaty, a strong man. wheel. They're, they're meaty with these tires on. Yeah, here. they're wide. They and look I, good. And I'm more of a more tire less wheel kind of guy. Um, I like the I like the meat on them. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of the look yeah. I wanted, and I'm I'm happy with it. No, I feel you, dude. So so what we're gonna do is after the power cleans on there, and after we've gone ahead and agitated that, we're gonna use our diluted uh, no rinse that we had in that bottle from earlier. Spray the wheels down, and then we're going to dry them off with our black edgeless 245s. So pretty simple, man. You'll kind of start seeing the rest of that power clean just kind of fall off the wheel. Hit the Brembo a little bit too, since those are awesome. Those are red. Those are super red. Those are red. Were those repainted? Yes, they've been repowder coated and rebuilt. Um, previous owner had them a teal and they were starting to chip and fade. So I sent them off to get repowder coated and rebuilt. And yeah, now they look awesome again. All right, we gone ahead and rinsed off the wheels with our O and R. So, towel for you, towel for me. Edgeless 245s in black, so they're not going to show a whole lot of dirt. There you go, man. Awesome. Start drying them off. So notice the the 245s. They're they're a thinner towel. Yeah. Very, um, yeah. Super thin. The 245 stands for the 245 GSM meaning that it's going to still be absorbent, it's just gonna be a thinner towel so you can kind of contour it more to the wheel itself um, and other surfaces. I personally like them for interior cleaning and wheel cleaning. A lot of people like them for door jams, uh, engine cleaning, and a lot of other basically jobs where you need to absorb, but you don't want a big bulky towel.
Yeah, definitely makes it nice to get in there behind the lug nuts and get that little spot that's always yep, that's always that sitting there. Yep, yeah, it's always just sitting back there, and as soon as you walk away, they start dripping down. So, yep. all right, man, I'm finishing up here. So, how are you looking over there? Good, just gonna break the caliper cleaned up. Good to go, looking really clean. I like it. Okay, we'll move to the other side and get these rinsed off and get these clean, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, so the car is officially done. We've gone ahead and cleaned it with O&R and we've protected it with optimal car wax. What do you think, man? Do you have fun? It was, yeah, I had a blast. Okay, it was awesome doing the rinseless car wash. Um, never done it before, obviously. That's <laughs> yeah. gale force winds coming in right now. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, it was awesome doing the rinseless car wash. Um, it's gonna be awesome for the winter times. Um, you take the car out, it gets snow, you know, all the road debris at that time. It'd be awesome to pull it in the garage, wash it. Yeah, get um, like, to get the salt off in the winter because then, that's when it starts building up, man. It exactly. starts getting on the car, so it's good to get it and off. And then to the other extreme, when it's 110 out here in a couple months or yeah. weeks, yeah. Um, not looking forward to it in the garage, not having to worry about water stains, you know, from not getting around the car fast enough to dry it. No. Um, that right there is going to be absolutely amazing to not have to worry about that. I loved the towels. Um, which, the one? Which, towel, which one? Okay, which one? The waffle right. towel. Waffle towel. Um, just during drying, you know, it didn't soak up so much, or it soaks up the water, but it doesn't become saturated and start streaking right away. Um, gotcha. It actually absorbs it nicely. It keeps drying the car. And then especially using that spray on wax, that's probably my favorite part. Yeah, um, yeah, being able yeah. to spray it anywhere, windows, trimming, having that as a wax instead of your everyday like paste wax. Paste wax. Yeah that Makes, takes yeah. a long time. I mean, spraying it, wiping it, I mean, that's in itself is just awesome. You know, you can do that on the go. If your car is clean and you pull up to a car meet or something or a show, boom, clean it right there and wax it and give it that nice shine. You'll be that guy, at the, you'll be that guy at the car <laughs> show waxing his car and people will be looking at you like, don't judge me, man. This I'll is, be a, I'll be this, the, this, is the, this stuff's the best, man. I'll be the guy at the McDonald's going in to get a burger and I'll wash it before, or I'll wax it before I go in just because I want it to look nice when I'm eating so That's I can awesome. look at it. No, dude, and I think it was awesome being able to learn about your car. I think I think you have a, a pretty big mod list and it's just going to get bigger from what it sounds like. Yep. Um, so we're excited to see it. Hopefully we'll have you back here on the show um, if you get some more mods done. You know? Definitely. But so I have to ask the most important part of this entire show, this entire series is can we go for a spin? Of course. Let's do it. All right, so we're ready to go. So let's start this piece up. Oh man, it sounds meaty. You can hear those cams. Oh, my seatbelt's on. My seatbelt's on. All right, let's do it. All right, so we are in the Evo right now. Um, Jason's driving. We're up here at our local Twisty, so we have plenty of open road, um, lots of turns to kind of put this thing to the test, man. So, you excited? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this should be pretty fun, man. And Evo's known for conquering mountains, so this should be a, this should be a fun ride. <laughs> oh man, dude, this thing rips! I'm trying to hold this camera, guys. I'm sorry, this thing. Oh man. <laughs> Smiles per gallon, man. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> right when you hear that turbo spool up, it's just you know things are about to start getting real. What kind of tires do you say they were? Federal 595 RSRRs. Yeah, these things grip, man. The oh handle is a. Uh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to oh handle it while holding the camera right now. I need <laughs> I need some designated mounts for this thing. Okay, we got some bikers coming up here. 2016 R1. You think we can take them? I think we can take them. 
Yeah. We're, we're, we're keeping it we're keeping it calm right now to, to have a conversation, but I was kind of explaining to Jason, I'm like, dude, I don't know how anybody, uh, I don't know how anybody talks during these type of reaction videos because, I mean, you're in the zone, I'm in the zone, <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to hold on for dear life, and dude, it's just, it's a blast, man. Dude, this car is, it's amazing. Awesome, awesome car, but you're gonna probably be coming up these roads more often now, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, man, we I really appreciate you taking me for a spin. I really hope that you you learned a couple of things for Wash Wednesday, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Hashtag that. So, uh, anyways, guys, we really appreciate you guys watching. Um, please check out Jason's channel. Uh, not channel. Your, uh, your IG, right? You have yep. an IG. Okay. Instagram. Maybe someday YouTube channel. Maybe. His Instagram is. It's low underscore PSI underscore Evo. Low underscore PSI underscore Evo. Uh, anyways, check out his Instagram to see more about his build and more pictures of this beautiful electric blue Evo. And stay tuned for more videos right here at the Rag Company.